Hey there traders, thanks for joining me for this video from thestockbanner.com. I just wanted to take a few minutes and give you a video recap of last week's trades from the site. You know, it was uh, not a profitable week actually. I lost money last week and got stopped out a number of times. But it was one of those weeks where even though I was wrong frequently, the key was limiting the damage. And it was just one of those weeks where the market was unable to really gather any momentum in either direction. It really was a, a market of stocks. And that's kind of a phrase a lot of people use to say that the overall market didn't do a lot, uh, a lot although there were individual stocks making uh, some strides in each direction due to it really being the biggest week uh, that we've seen so far as we're getting underway in terms of earnings. So uh, I wanted to uh, recap these for you. Let me just kind of walk you through them one trade at a time. So the first trade I took was on Monday. This was an AFFY. And uh, here's a stock that still looks stable. Looks like it still has opportunity to lift here, but I was interested in taking it on a move through this uh, recent resistance. And that was gonna be at the 12.05 level. So Monday I got along as it crossed 12.05. It was an early trigger. I got no real follow through. And this thing reversed lower, stopped me out for a 13 cent loss. Now on Tuesday, I closed out a swing trade in this MGA, which I had entered on Monday on a break of this rising trend line. Now, it wasn't a typical entry for me in terms of a swing trade. Most swing trades, I'm willing to enter the stock if it does gap beyond my intended price a little bit, but I don't want to chase it very far. In fact, I've got a kind of a sliding scale and it's on the swing trading strategy page of the site where basically the stock, the further it gaps, the smaller a position I'm going to hold for the trade. So if I happen to uh, get stopped into the trade and uh, and it's beyond the price I intended to take, I'll look to immediately reduce my size. And what that does is help offset the added risk that I'm taking on with the difference between my entry price and my stop loss. So given that uh, a stock has gapped through that level, that discrepancy is going to be wider and therefore I want a smaller position to offset that. Well, in the case of uh, MGA, let me just show you the, uh, the 15 minute chart. So I'm gonna go back here and this right here was last Friday's close. And you see this vertical line, by the way, if you're not watching this full screen in the 720p setting, you're gonna wanna switch to that. It'll give you the best quality. Uh, but this was Friday's close from the week before. And uh, we saw that uh, MGA gapped uh, considerably lower. And in fact, uh, it opened way down here at the 4390 level. So you can see just what a sizable gap that was. And I had not intended to do that. In fact, if a stock gaps 3% beyond my intended entry, I'll completely negate the trade, but in this case it was a 2.8% gap, and uh, you know what I did was just cut my size down to one quarter of normal. So I was ultimately stopped out as this thing rallied back up into not only Monday uh, but then continued higher on Tuesday. I stopped out of this trade, and what I did was take a 3.8% loss on a one quarter position. So the effect was really a net loss you know, for a typical swing of just under 1%. So it really was not as painful as that might sound, but it was a, a losing trade nonetheless. So also on Tuesday, I did take some, some day trades. One of them was in this Sears Holding, SHLD, which has been in correction mode here for several weeks. And the stock had kind of stabilized over the course of the past few days. And I was looking to get long if this thing could turn higher and cross that trend line right there, which it attempted to do on Tuesday. I got long at $59.30. This thing went like 43 cents, uh, but then it ran into kind of this multi-day resistance from the previous week. And that was grounds for a little bit of selling in the stock. So it did reverse lower and uh, it actually uh, stopped me out for a 60 cent loss. And this thing just then continued lower throughout, throughout the remainder of the week. So I was glad to certainly have been out of it, uh, but it clearly isn't ready just yet. And it looks like I'll need to just redraw this trend line a little bit. As you know, trend lines are just kind of uh, a process. And so you've got to continue uh, redrawing them as necessary. And at this point, uh, that attempt to cross that trend line was negated and now the stock has made new lows. So the downtrend is still very much intact and that's just another one I wanted to point out. Another one I took on Tuesday was this INXN and I wanted to get long through 1870. That's as this recent high was crossed to the upside. 
Let me show you the intraday chart. And you can see that right here, this is the opening bar for this stock. And uh, this thing, uh, I, I got long at 1870, which was right about here. Uh, this thing opened at like 1850, and then it, it shot up very quickly, and then it reversed right back down. And so, uh, you know, I, I did take this trade on the initial spike. I did get stopped out for a 19 cent loss. And uh, ultimately, the stock did go again later in the day, and it made a move about equivalent to what I lost. Uh, so for those willing to take a kind of a second chance entry, it did offer that. It didn't make a big move, but all in all, this is just another one of those examples of part of my trading style is as soon as a key level is crossed, I'm willing to enter it. This thing did so, but you know it also invites some of these initial head fakes on those opening bars as well, and that's just kind of part of it, and I understand that. On Wednesday, I took a trade in this Amazon as it had been channeling lower here for a few weeks. I wanted to get long if this upper trend line was crossed, and that was at the 191 level. So I uh, bought this thing. It uh, went about two and a half dollars higher, and then spent the rest of the day in this range, kind of between my entry and that high. So it offered you know a few opportunities to book some gains, and this was uh, a fair trade for me. So uh, made a little money there. Also took a trade in this trip, which uh, was pulling back here off the recent high, but the overall uptrend still intact. And you can see all these higher lows here on the chart and, and higher highs along with that. So the, the trend is still up, but I was interested in buying this uh, pullback within the trend as price moved back up through this uh, descending trend line. Well, it did that on Tuesday, late in the day. So I wanted to get long on a continuation move on Wednesday. And that was at the 35 quarter level. And I got a very limited initial follow through as this thing did turn back down, it stopped me out. Uh, later in the day, it did go again, uh, along with some market sympathy. So uh, again, as a second chance trade, it did offer some potential. I also took a trade in this Newmont Mining NEM, which has been in a downtrend. We had this small channel here as the stock base near lows. I got short as that lower trend line was cracked at 47.75. Uh, but this thing didn't make much progress. The mo overall market stabilized. This one never really ran. Uh, got up like a quarter at my best point and uh, ended up taking a 14 cent loss at the end of the day. So a very minor loss there. I also took a trade on Wednesday in this SMG, which uh, had kind of failed at resistance recently. We saw hard selling and then a rebound and kind of some stalled out price action. So this looked like sort of a lower high in the making and this thing may still do that, but uh, I wanted to get sure if this thing started to roll over and make a multi-day low, which it did as it moved through this area right here. Now that was at the 52.40 level. And uh, this thing again, never really gained momentum. It was very light volume. I closed it at the end of the day for about a 10 cent gain. So it really uh, didn't offer me much. I made a little bit uh, not really uh, worth discussing. On Thursday, uh, I took this Smith & Wesson SWHC. It had pulled back beneath this trend line. I got long through the uh, upper break at $8.15. And I had mentioned that uh, I wanted, I mentioned this the night before, that I wanted to uh, own this thing and I would give it back to the $8 level. I wanted to see the whole number held if it pulled back to that level. And you can see here that kind of mid-afternoon it pulled back and it touched the $8 level several different times, but it never did break it. Uh, so I stayed with this one. It did lift a little bit from there. Uh, ultimately, I took a five cent loss at the close. So it was just not a very exciting trade. Uh, also took this AGCO on a break of this rising trend line. You can see the stock has been in correction mode lately and we had just undercut this support area which turned into some resistance. You can see that it's still resistance now. I wanted to get short if this rising trend line was broken. That took place on Thursday at the $44.50 level. I saw no continuation. The market reversed sharply higher from there. In fact, let me just show you the intraday chart. And that was right here. So got short right here as this rising trend line was broken and we saw uh, the entire market reverse higher. You pull up a chart of the spiders, uh, it looks just like this. In fact, let me just show you that. You can see right here, same scenario. Uh, we just ramped higher to new highs right there. And so it was just one of those uh, events where it's kind of hard to fight that. So uh, I did get stopped out in that one for a 45 cent loss. And I also took a trade in this John Deere, which is DE. And we see that this stock has also been carving out lower highs of late. And this rising trend line, you know, this bounce in price corresponded with a decline in volume. That's not the kind of divergence that you really want to see. So I wanted to get sure if this rising trend line was broken. Uh, it went about 90 cents at its best point, uh, but the market then created a higher low and so did John Deere. 
fact, let me just kind of show you that. That was right here in the afternoon. And so as this thing reversed back up, you know, I went ahead and closed this out. I made about a 50 cent gain in this one and uh, just continued higher from there. So not a great trade, but not a bad trade either. Uh, on Friday, I took a few trades as well. One of them was in this DFS, Discover Financial Services. Had this wedge going on here with an overall uptrend still intact. I got long through this upper trend line at 33.10 and uh, saw just a minor push from there. And then the stock just spent the rest of the day in a trading range. I closed it out at the end of the day for about a 17 cent loss. So nothing real exciting there. I took another trade in this Newmont Mining NEM as I wanted to just see if this thing could try again as a break through the 4740 level would mark a new low. So I got short there. It occurred in the afternoon and uh, really just had very limited movement beyond that. I booked a 16 cent winner at the close. Nothing real exciting. And I also took this IDCC as the stock had recently broken through some short term support. It attempted to rebound on Tuesday. It could not reclaim that area. Then it drifted back down and I wanted to get short on a break to new lows. That took place at 31.55. And uh, the stock just apparently wasn't ready to go yet. And so I covered on this uh, initial bounce uh, right here into midday and uh, booked a 32 cent loss. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm still in three, three swing trades over the weekend and I will discuss those with you here after they've been closed out. But while I'm in swing trades, I discuss them only with subscribers at the stockbandit.com. Uh, but overall, there's a look at week 16. Overall, I lost money, but I didn't get killed by any means. And so on weeks like that, it's all about risk management. It's about minimizing the damage of failed trades when they happen and they do happen and I have them and I have weeks where I lose money and this was one of them. I get chopped around, I get entered into trades that initially look good and they're setups that I'm willing to take even if I come across them again and yet they just don't work out and that's just part of trading. So when that occurs, the biggest job that you have is to manage the losses and to really reduce the amount of damage that those losing trades are able to do to your account. So, you know, next week is a new week. Uh, 2012 has still been a nice year for me. So, one down week is is not a bad deal uh, to inc to encounter uh, at this stage in the game. You know, and I had one uh, a couple of few weeks ago, but they they come along. And so, I just wanted to just be up front here, explain my trades, show you the setups that I took because uh, I really did not lower my standards. I didn't abort my trading plan. I did not. Uh, dismiss discipline. I stuck with my trades and I went with them and they just didn't work out. So I'm going to take it in stride. I'm going to keep moving forward. But thank you for joining me for this video. If you're not already a subscriber at thestockbandit.com, stop by the site. Check out the free trial. We'd love to have the chance to trade with you. Other than that, enjoy your weekend. I will see you back here soon with more videos. But until then, trade like a bandit.